Good morning. Drive for show or putt for dough? Now that's been attributed to a number of golfers over the years, but the person who actually said it was Bobby Locke, who was an exceptionally good putter, so it's no surprise that he had a quote that emphasised the good part of his game. I don't like it. I think it diminishes the importance of driving, especially for us amateurs. Driving is just so important to your score. Not length, direction. Right, so where do I start? Well, let's start with Byron Nelson. He was once asked, what are the three most important clubs in golf? And he said, the putter, the driver, and the wedge. Ben Hogan was asked the same question. And he answered, the driver, the putter, the wedge. Because the driver sets up the hole. There's no point being in an exceptional putter like Bobby Locke if you're putting three balls out of bounds or in the water every round. That is not going to work for a professional. So I'm kind of leaning towards what Ben Hogan said. The driver comes first. Tony Jacklin was once asked, what's been the biggest advance in your career in golf? And he said green keeping. When he started on the British circuit, it was all about hitting fairway and hitting the green in regulation. He said nobody was a good putter because the greens were just simply slow and bumpy and you could never get a consistent result which is a huge change to what we see on TV these days You watch any highlight reels of a professional tournament and all you see is pros holding putt after putt after putt. It really does seem that putting is the most important thing in the professional game. Although you never do get to see the guy who misses the cut shooting a pair of 77s. But Hank Haney said the best gift he can give a professional golfer is another five miles per hour on their driver swing. Essentially another 12 or 15 yards of carry. So Hank seems to think that driving is the most important thing. But perhaps it's the golf courses that professionals play. They certainly don't play the golf courses that we do not by a long way and I'm not talking about the length yep you don't want to go up there on this hole <laughs> now somebody did the stats on professional golf what they found was the winner each week was not the best putter. It was the most accurate player. The person who hit the most greens in reg, most fairways, won. I'm mean, sure they putted well that week as well, but it was the accurate player who wins week after week after week. 
not the Jordan Spieth of this world. Although his putting has been rather quiet of late. Take this hole. If I miss left, I'm chipping out of the trees. There's no forward shot towards the green. If I miss right, I'm either in chest deep bracken or another yard further, I'm out of bounds. How often do you see a professional play a course with out of bounds so tight to the fairway? It, it just doesn't happen. The other thing is the rough they play out of is all cut to exactly the same height and it's never really quite long enough to give them too much trouble. They always seem to be able to get it out and towards the green or on the green and even make birdie. They don't get the kind of scruffy rough that we play where you've got a big chunk behind the ball and there is no way that you can get the club on the back of the ball. There's going to be an inch of grass between the face and the ball and you just knock it out maybe 50% of the yardage that you normally do. They don't seem to have trees overhanging the fairways unless they're playing Hilton Head or Wentworth or Riviera. Most of the time they have a clear shot at the green. We play courses with not just trees in the rough, but you can be in the fairway and not have a shot. Imagine this lot when they've matured. I wouldn't have a shot. So they do play different courses as well. Courses that allow them to hit the driver as hard as they can and not really be penalised for it. Yep, we play a different game, so we shouldn't try and emulate them. Right, so we've had a few opinions from professionals and uh, teachers and the like as we've gone round the front. Now the back nine. Now you get to hear my opinion. So out of the three clubs, what order do I put them in? I go driver, wedge, putter. You gotta drive it well, put it in the fairway or maybe just in the first bit of rough where you can still get towards the green and you need a wedge for your chipping and your scoring it doesn't matter which wedge you know you've got a whole bunch of wedges and then the putter comes in and there is a very good reason why I put the putter last and um, I'll talk about that as I attempt to do a little bit better on the back nine it is the easier nine so there's every chance I might be a shot better or maybe two a short par four and you need to be able to take advantage of it. And to take advantage of it, you need a straight drive. Trees left is lost ball. Trees right is blocked out and it's quite narrow. So a straight drive is required. I mean, if my drive had been straight today, I'd be up there on the green putting for a two. 
Not a bad bunker shot though. So I put driving first, the same as Ben Hogan. Having a swing that finds the target. And usually that means a swing that is not flat out. That's something that a lot of people get wrong. Is how hard they try and hit the ball. Now there are plenty of young men out there who can drive it over 300 yards. I've played a lot of golf with them. But there aren't many who can drive it 300 yards and find it 14 times around. So I believe with driving you've always got to swing within yourself and then the results will get better. How often do you see a pro playing a course or a hole like this? Lost ball right and if you go in the trees on the left you're chipping out and it's all really tight to the fairway there's no acres of rough between the fairway and the problem the problem is right there next to you so even with a hybrid driving it straight is really important Why do I put the putter last? Quite simply, a professional golfer is going to play on more or less the same greens every week they play. Even if they're having a week off and they're playing on their home course in Orlando, the greens will be more or less the same as they play on tour. That's why they chose that particular course as their home course. What about us? Well, we play winter greens where they're very slow and bumpy and a bit muddy. Then along comes spring and they hollow time them and sand them and it takes weeks for them to recover and they're slow and bumpy. Then they get to a reasonable speed and a reasonable amount of smoothness. Just when you got used to that, they shave them for the club championship and then two weeks later they're back to normal and then they shave them for captain's day or the member guest tournament and then two weeks later they're back to normal next thing you know they're hollow tining and sanding them and they're slow and bumpy in the autumn and then you're back to winter greens so basically every time we play especially if you play away from home as well every time we play the stroke length and speed for a 20 footer changes. So that's why I put the putter last. We are forever changing our stroke for the conditions. And then you go and play away and their greens are different. Or you go on the practice putting green and it's lightning and you go out and play and the first green is slow and it takes three or four holes to get used to that speed. It is forever changing for us. It's still really important. It's still the third club out of 14. But it is the third club. The wedge goes number two simply because we use it so much. 100 yarders, 50 yarders, flicks over bunkers, chip and runs. We're forever using a wedge. And the better we are with that wedge, the better our score will be.
driver, wedge, putter. That's my choice. Might not be yours, because we're all different. I'm just letting you know how I feel. Came off the back of the bunker. I'll tell you one thing for free, I am really tired. Obviously with these hot, humid nights that we get in Gloucester, I haven't been sleeping much. And uh, I had an hour session in the, um, in the studio, so I know what I'm doing wrong at the moment. The swing is too much out to in. I don't mind it being a little bit out to in, but it's six degrees out to in, which means you've got to open the face a bit more which means you're hitting a weak shot. So anyway, drive for show, putt for dough. Uh, either or. Well, it's not an either or, is it? You need to drive well, you need to hit your irons well, you need to pitch and chip well, and you need to putt well. It's, there's no either or. I may have said this before in a previous video, I don't know. Anyway, there's a wedding on, and they don't want us golfers slicing onto the patio and disturbing the guests. So we're on a forward tee, so I suspect we're going forward to the blues. Cheerio.